In order to pray well, there are many things we have to do. Among them is preventing all that is not prayer. For the enemy will not only take away your energy as well as your time to pray. He will additionally induce you to use many empty words. This is also something to which you should have your eyes wide open. You must refuse to waste your prayer time. The prayers of a great number of people are not real. They use many vain words which fail to accomplish any work. Once I heard of an incident concerning Evan Roberts. At first I could hardly believe it. You may know that Mr. Roberts was the great revivalist in Wales. On one occasion there were a few believers praying in his parlor for a specific matter. When one of the brothers had prayed through half of his prayer, Mr. Roberts went over to him and with his hand stopped his mouth and said, Brother, do not continue on, because you are not praying. When I read of this, I thought this was impossible, and yet Mr. Roberts had done it. I know now that he was right in so doing. Many words in our prayer come from our flesh. Our prayer may be long drawn out with many words which are not real or effective. Frequently, in our time of prayer we circle around the world several times, using up time and energy without obtaining any answer to real prayer. Though you have prayed much, your prayer will not be answered nor will it be effective. You simply expend your time and strength ill-advisedly. Prayer need not be too long. There is no necessity to insert many speeches into it. Be careful lest you have too much argument in your prayer. We need only to present our heart desire before God. That alone is enough. We should not add many other things to it. If what you say are empty words, you yourself know that God will not hear you. We must therefore take note and be watchful. What do we need to watch? Watch that we do not say any word carelessly before God. There was once a Christian who was quite powerful in prayer. He at one time wrote a hymn in which was found this sentiment, If you come to God, please prepare beforehand what you will ask. Let me inquire of you, how would you go to a judge to present your case? Would you go empty-handed? No, you first would prepare a petition. In a similar manner ought we to go to God. You and I must first prepare what we wish to pray. We ought not approach him without having any idea what we want. Oftentimes prayers have no power and accomplish no work and therefore go unanswered. Such a result can frequently be attributed to the fact that our prayers are aimless because they are accompanied by idle words. This again is the wile of Satan. He gets us to utter idle words which are absolutely useless. Our prayers in such case will return to us without changing anything. For this reason, we must watch with vigilance in our prayer. You thus must first know what your heart desire is. You need to be clear as to what you will ask of God. You cannot come without some aspiration. If there is no heart desire, there can be no real prayer, for all prayers are governed by heart desire. Once a blind man asked the Lord, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Lord answered him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Now the Lord today would also ask of you, What do you want from me in your prayer? Many people may have prayed for fifteen or twenty minutes. If you were to pull them aside and ask them what they had asked of God, they would probably not be able to tell you anything exact. Though they have said much, they do not know what they want. There is no heart desire. How can you expect to be used by God in this work of prayer if there is no preparation of heart? We must pay attention to our heart desire before we ever come to pray. Let us search diligently as to what we really want. There is another matter of equal importance in prayer. It concerns the phraseology we use in it. You will recall how one day a Syrophoenician woman came to the Lord asking for healing of her daughter. The Lord responded by saying, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Now the Gentiles were considered by the Jews to be dogs. This woman, though, did not mind being termed as such. 
If she was looked upon as a dog, then let her be viewed as a dog. So she replied, Yea, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Now listen to what the Lord then answered her with. For this saying go thy way, the demon is gone out of thy daughter. This incident indicates to us how important our phraseology before God is. The Lord answered this woman's request because she has uttered the right phrase. Hence, besides having a proper heart desire before God, we must also see to it that we have the right words with which to express our desire. How often we truly have a heart aspiration within, yet after we pray for a while our words begin to drift away from the burden we have. Let us realize that all powerful prayers have excellent phraseology. Yet this observation is not meant to imply that we should in advance compose a good prayer and then recite it to God. We have now come to understand two important things concerning prayer. We must pay attention to guard our heart desire and to use the proper words. We shall next notice a third thing. We need to watch as to how we ask. A most pitiful thing is that many who have a proper desire and the right words do not know how to watch themselves in prayer. So that before long their words have drifted far afield, way beyond the point of return. For this reason, in prayer we need to make sure our words do not run wild. Especially in loud prayers should we carefully examine to see if our words have wandered far from the subject. If so, we must draw them back. Such wandering can easily happen because although at the beginning we really have something in heart to ask, yet as we utter one sentence after another we can unconsciously leave the center and move the words of our prayer into other direction. If we realize we have indeed left the center, we must begin anew and redirect our words back to the subject. Let us be careful in having our prayer hitched to the goal we have in mind without any let up. It is important in prayer that it is maintained with vigilance and firmness so that no unnecessary words may filter in. What is being emphasized here is that we not allow any unnecessary or vain words to infiltrate our prayer. We must guard against many speeches and arguments invading our prayers. In conclusion, then, the points we have just discussed include these three things. First, that in order to eliminate an effective prayer, we must have a heart desire. That is to say, we must have in view a specific object for which to ask. Second, we need to have exact phraseology. Our words must be right. And third, we should maintain a good condition during prayer by not allowing unimportant words to be added to our prayer so that we are kept from praying what is not prayer. Praying at all seasons. For our prayer to be truly effective, we must spread out our prayer like a net. What does this mean? It means we must pray with all prayers so that nothing is left out which should be prayed for. We will not allow anything to slip away. Without such a prayer net we will not be able to obtain good results. A person who knows how to pray knows how to pour out his heart desire completely before God. He will use all kinds of prayers to surround us with a net the thing he prays for so that the adversary can do absolutely nothing. Nowadays our prayers are too loose, they are not tight enough. Though we may use many words, our prayers are not well-rounded, thus providing the enemy loopholes through which to make his attack. But if our prayers are like spreading nets, the enemy will have no opening by which to get in. And thus shall our petitions before God be realized. Let us take the following as an example of this. Suppose a brother situated locally goes to the borderland to preach the gospel. In support of him you have a heart to be responsible for him in prayer. With such an earnest desire, you must lay before God in prayer everything you can think of in connection with this brother's mission to the borderland. You pray for his needs, the train he must take, the rail tracks of the train, his ticket, porters, luggage, lodging on the way, food, health, and the people he will meet on the train. You pray for the house in which he will stay after his arrival, the local people, his manners and attitude among the people he will serve, his preaching, his first work, and his needs for food and clothing in the borderland area. In short, you pray for everything you can think of in relation to this brother. 
You even pray for the delivery of his mail, asking God to protect every piece that none will be lost or stolen. This is praying with all prayers, by which you spread as it were a net for that brother, leaving nothing unprayed for so that he may have peace in all things. Satan will not be able to do anything towards that brother because you have already surrounded him with a protective net. With such a prayer net, the enemy's hand is completely tied. Such kind of prayer naturally requires watching, for unless you watch, you will not know that there are so many aspects you need to pray for on his behalf. A hasty prayer or a passing prayer, a prayer overly economized in time, is usually a careless prayer which gives the adversary loopholes by which to enter in. Oftentimes such a careless prayer signifies a shallow desire. If you did have a deep desire, you would be compelled by the burden within you to pray with all prayers. Naturally, this of which we have been speaking has a close relationship to knowledge. You must therefore watch and open your eyes wide so that you may pray for everything you notice and think of. If you do not watch, your prayer may be concluded in two sentences, since you have nothing more to pray about. Hence to serve the Lord well in prayer, we need to be watchful concerning time, attitude, and all the various aspects of things until all have been prayed for. This is not an easy task, but it is an expression of great love. If there is no love there, will there be such intercession? Without real love no one will intercede, no child of God will do the work of intercession. Watch after prayer A good physician will not only be careful in prescribing medicine but will in addition consider the effect on the patient after he has taken it. For the doctor knows that as the patient's symptoms change, his physiology changes too. The physician must therefore change his method of care. In a similar way, with respect to prayer, after you have prayed, you must be watchful for any new discovery, new change or new attitude. You need to observe continuously if any new phenomenon appears in the person or thing that you prayed for. Otherwise, even though you have prayed, it will be of no avail if there is no watchfulness. It is very essential for you to watch the afterwards of the person or thing you prayed for. This will affect your prayer before God. Prayer must not only be with all prayers but in all seasons as well. Not just pray once, but pray many times. Not only with all prayers at one time, but with all prayers in all seasons. Without vigilance, prayer frequently becomes powerless and thus we must be watchful after prayer. Take as another example the following situation. Say that you pray for one who opposes the Lord. You ask God to make him believe. You pray for him with all prayers, and not just once but in all seasons. Meanwhile, you believe in God's promise and lay hold of his word. After several days, the situation appears to grow worse. He opposes the Lord more than ever before. Many people may ignore the phenomenon and keep on praying the old prayers. This is wrong. Prayer alone is not enough. You must observe and lay his opposition before God, telling him that the man has increased his opposition. At the same time, you ask God why his condition has worsened and what you should now do. If you are watchful, God may give you light and let you know that this is due to the fact that your prayer has already affected the adversary, otherwise there would not be such a change. The enemy is afraid you will snatch this man away, and hence he has stirred up further opposition in the man. So you may begin to praise God. Although the outward opposition is increased, you know your prayer has touched that person. That is why the enemy has to throw a tighter protective ring around him. But you can now change to another kind of prayer and spread a new net. Perhaps after a little time has elapsed, his attitude begins to soften. Formerly he would ignore you, but now he seems willing to talk with you. At this juncture, you need to spread still another prayer net. In other words, you need to alter your prayer according to the changing circumstances. For this, however, it demands much watching. One thing is certain here, that knowledge governs prayer. 
The clearer you are about a matter, the easier you can pray for it. Hence, if anyone asks you to pray for a certain matter, that person should clearly tell you about it. For you can pray only as much as you know. Watching will help us to know which direction our prayer should go as well as how much change has occurred in the person or thing prayed for. We must continually be on the watch so as to notice the effect of our prayer as to whether the situation grows worse or gets better, whether it advances or retreats. Oftentimes we need to keep on watching a person, a work, a trial, or even a brother because we must be not only faithful but also wise. Our eyes should be as open as they are closed. We need to close our eyes in order to pray faithfully for people, but we need also to open them to notice any change. If we merely close our eyes, the enemy will have plenty of opportunities to deceive us. In Ephesians 6, where spiritual warfare is spoken of, the most important element in it is mentioned last, which is that of prayer. But this prayer needs to be supported with watching. Only in this way will our prayer be effective. Let us understand that the basic essential is to pray. But if we wish our prayer to be powerful, we must add to it the matter of watching. Unfortunately, many people today have not learned how to do the work of prayer. They are rather vague about it. Today we have no other motive than expecting God to revive us into doing this work. Please do not forget that in the life of every child of God the most attacked facet of his walk is prayer. For without prayer, there will be no power. Because of this fact, Satan especially tries to disturb the Christian's prayer life, causing him to have neither time nor strength to pray, causing him to use many vain words in his prayer, to omit many things without the matter being properly covered in prayer, and to fail to observe the changes after prayer. In order to learn well how to pray, a person needs to pay attention to these five points. Although these matters are seemingly rather simple, they are nonetheless quite profound. People who have prayed for years have learned these five things well. Beginners in prayer, on the other hand, should attend diligently to these five points. And as time goes on, they shall become more experienced in prayer. May God be gracious to us today that we may pay attention to these five points.